Welcome to another Vita Learning video. Today we're going over stain and glaze texturing of your ceramic restorations and the tools that you need to accomplish this. So first things first, you need to understand what the material is you're going to apply your stain and glaze with. You always apply stain and glaze to the ceramic and fire it at the temperature according to the material manufacturer. So therefore you need to have a furnace in which you are controlling your climb rate, your pre-dry time, your high temperature, again according to the material. So know what material you're going to use. The ceramic restoration, if it's an all ceramic, you might want to make yourself a die that represents the prep. On a lot of these translucent all ceramic materials, the prep, the color of the prep, is going to bleed through. So if you've created yourself a dye made out of composite, you can use that prior to staining and glazing so that you don't add too much color to the restoration. After all, you're trying to match it up to a shade tab. And if the underlying prep is going to cause more color than you want, you may over apply the color. So make sure you, you try to use a dye. You just made out a composite very quickly. And then you can understand approximately how much color you want to add to your ceramic restoration. If you are digital dental, then you are left with a restoration on a sprue. On the sprue, you want to use a diamond disc, preferably a, a double-sided diamond disc. This just allows that you can cut through it gradually through the sprue at a nice pace without overheating it. On some materials, it's best that you just use a little bit of water on your finger and drop it into the sprue as you are cutting the sprue off and that will help reduce the heat. If you're going to grind off your sprue you need a grinding wheel diamond impregnated or one that is suitable for all ceramics or the material you're going to use. You may want to have a polishing wheel a pre-polishing wheel. This happens to be just a diamond reinforced rubber wheel that is suitable for all ceramics. If you're talking about a zirconia restoration, after you use the same tools on the all ceramic one, you might want to use what we call a scotch bright type wheel that will help pre-polish your zirconia restoration. It's like a Brillo pad it's meant for it's meant to reduce or remove the edges of the thermoplastics that we can mill. So that's just a Scotch guard type wheel for zirconia. It works really nice. You're going to need some diamonds. So if you're going to do yourself some uh, texturing and you do this prior to polishing, you may require different shaped diamond burrs that can be used and then you need to make sure that if you have a specific polishing set for specific for specific materials make sure you use that according to the manufacturer this happens to be for the Suprinity PC but it's also used for zirconia that has been centered as well this does a really nice job on zirconia centered zirconia it doesn't leave that iridescent or oyster shell look like many of the polishers do for zirconia. You're then going to need the firing pegs, firing trays. These come in various shapes, various sizes. This happens to be a Vita one. There's a, a flat one for posterior crowns. You've got what I call a witch's hat. It's got a, a spike to it that is great for anteriors. You also have the pegs that you can use. And then also I like to use the honeycomb with a platinum pin. 
Now these last forever, so don't be scared of any pricing, but the good thing about the platinum pins is that they don't absorb a lot of the heat. All the heat is applied to the restoration and they can be bent to either go into a, an anterior or a posterior or bridge, whatever you may have. So these are very nice to kind of manipulate into the shape that you want. We're also gonna need, before we fire it, some quick peg or some peg material. This is putty, insulation putty. Most of the Vita materials don't require a lot of the putty material to either crystallize and or fire. Just need enough usually to cover the top of the pin so that it doesn't come in contact with the inside of the restoration. It's a very nice material. Uh, and then of course we have to decide, are we gonna use a paste or a powder formula glaze material and or stains, the color stains. So when you have a paste, it is pre-measured and placed inside a tub by the manufacturer, in this case, Vita. This is the Vita low temperature glaze, suitable for most all ceramic restorations and zirconia. You just want to mix using an instrument about 60 seconds prior to use. If you find that the consistency isn't what you're looking for, then maybe you go to a powder liquid. This allows you to do decide on the thickness or thinness of your glaze. So there is no right or wrong consistency if it, the result is coming out to your liking or how you want the result to be. And then we have, uh, of course, brushes. You'll have to get a good set of brushes eventually. This is very personal as well as whether paste or powder, color stains or glaze. The brush you use is what you find is most easily used by you. So some people like the, the heavy brush to apply the glaze. Sometimes a number two brush, a little bit bigger in the uh, that's pointed. And then you've got smaller, a number two and a number double zero brush for your color stains as well. You will need a Kleenex and you wanna make sure that the Kleenex is lotion free. And that way when you use it, you can wipe your brushes across it as you rotate it so that you can clean it up. You'll also need a good stir stick, whether it's a plastic one and or maybe a glass rod you can at times, you can also use the end of your brush as well to mix. But I recommend more of a uh, dedicated stir stick for that. You'll either need a palette, a stain palette. This happens to be a Lazy Susan one. This has uh, all of the color stains that Vita fabricates. And each stain basically has its own purpose whether it's to actually characterized, you know, you see here white for, for the frosty look, uh, the mountain frosty look on posteriors, maybe decalcification on anteriors. You've got the, the cream color, yellows, oranges. You've got the very darker ones for heavier stains. And then you get into this area in which any of these can start being used for translucency to manipulate the translucency or at least the appearance of translucency in your restoration. And then of course you have the glaze and your glaze liquid in this case. So either a plastic stain palette or you can use a, a glass slab. You just dump it on here, mix it up and then wash it off when you're all done. The good thing about the uh, steam palette though is it, as, long, as long as it is covered, you can just put this up away in a desk drawer or in your cabinet and just leave it there so that it becomes uh, dust free. We're then gonna also have to hold the crown. So there's various instruments for that as well. This is a, a nice 
pair of type reverse pliers, if you will. They have these little rubber grommets at the end. You can position your crown inside. You can position your crown inside. You can position your crown inside. and hold it so that you can twist it around and turn it around so those, those are fairly nice you can get away with just a common pair of tweezers they wiggle a little bit more on a pair of tweezers but that's possibility i personally like to use a crown forcep or a crown holder so these have little diamond tips at the end the little wheel here that allows you to open or close. I like these because you can put just enough tension inside the crown so that you can turn it around, you can turn it upside down. It with just enough tension that as you're brushing on your stain or your glaze, the crown doesn't move. Now, if you're using anything that is like a crown holder, uh, you would then need a separate pair of tweezers so that after you've applied your stain and glaze, you go ahead and loosen it and then transfer this to your firing tray. If you're doing craze lines, if you want to go crazy and put craze lines or crack lines or want to draw a color stain through the interproximal area or through the occlusal aspect, you can get an old endo file. You can create your own using an endo file. This happens to be just a BIC uh, cartridge. You remove the ink cartridge and in its place you put a endo file and then just loot this inside and this is a nice handy uh, endo file that you can use you're also going to need some distilled water so make sure you use your distilled water to rinse out your brushes prior to going from one color to another so you you do not contaminate the various colors and then of course you're going to need a hand piece a slow hand piece that you can put your rotary instruments into uh, we usually use a slow speed for this and then of course you're going to need a bench light this happens to be an ot light and the nice thing about this it is battery operated led and it has a, a true white color to it and there you have it. These are the instruments and tools that you would need to get started to texture, stain and glaze, and create your nice looking restoration as needed. Thank you.